What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is the Kefloos here and today we are going to be continuing our playthrough of Mass Effect 3 here on the channel. So as usual folks, if you guys are going to enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like on this video as well as hit that big red subscribe button down below. Because I'll be super grateful and appreciative of your support. And at the same time, if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of this content that I am currently pushing out on the channel. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's just quickly jump right back into this one. And uh, here we are, we are in Mass Effect 3 and more specifically, we are in Shepard's Cabin. Um, it's basically the captain's cabin and uh <laughs> yeah um i rarely come up here if i'm being honest that's because there really isn't much to do here to tell you the truth aside from just uh, you know just uh, um interacting with the computer it, it doesn't really do anything if i'm being honest and if you have fish it basically um well at, at the moment i don't have any fish you have to purchase fish later on or uh if you're if you're coming back from mass effect 2 there's gonna be a segment where you can uh retrieve your fish from uh uh, from a character which I i'm not gonna mention anything it, you can get your fish back from a character uh, that you meet later on so yeah um right now there's really nothing much to do in fact there isn't anything to do here at all aside from change your outfit a bit so um yeah with that out of the way um we're just gonna quickly head down to uh, the cic um i'm in a bit of a rush here today because we have a lot of things to do and um, i'm not sure if i'm able to fit this all into a single episode um Basically, what I want to do is I want to speak to all the squad mates uh, that we can at the moment. That's because um, there's a reason that I'm doing that. I'll explain it later. But for now, we're going to kick things off by um, speaking to Specialist Trainer. Commander, come to check on your new recruit. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. Next time you need something, just ask. You're not alone here. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush is a Scission Promark 4. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque and massage the gums. It costs 6,000 credits. Okay, yeah. You're on your own with that. In any event, I appreciate you giving me the chance to stay. Was there anything else? Carry on, specialist. <laughs> 6,000 credits for a goddamn toothbrush. <laughs> Alright, so, um, anyways, um, we're just gonna go on ahead to the cockpit here, um, and we're gonna go ahead and speak to one of our pilots. His name is Joker. Um, it's kinda interesting, actually, that, um, Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 3, we, Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2, we never actually spoke to Joker. That's because, um, like I said, the dialogues weren't that important in the previous games, um, so there wasn't really, a, there wasn't really any, uh, reason that you want to speak to your squad mates aside from getting some, in, some, uh, some pieces of information some pieces of lore but that being said if you're really interested to see the dialogue that um that transpired in the previous two games feel free to let me know um drop it in the comment section down below or something um what i'll do is i'll probably get back into the one of the older games and uh yeah i'll just uh, quickly do um a compilation of all the scenes of uh, of the dialogues and stuff like that and i'll put it under the respective series so in mass effect 1 we'll have all the di dialogues there and mass effect 2 we will have all the dialogues there if you want to watch that of course so um yeah let me know on that and for the meantime right now we're just gonna go ahead and speak to joker for the first time ever <laughs> Hey, Commander. You know, I had my doubts about the Council. But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. They've spent years denying the threat. You think they'd be prepared now? I was kind of hoping that maybe they were planning in secret and just not telling you about it because, you know, Cerberus. Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them. You know, for old time's sake. <laughs> there was a nice little reference there. Uh, we used to hang up on the council in Mass Effect One. It was really funny. Um, the way we uh, you know, we completed its mission, each mission, and then we basically told the council you can kiss my ass. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, yeah. The reason why I'm talking to the squad mates is because there's actually, if I if I'm not mistaken, um, it's been quite some time since I played Mass Effect Three, about two or three years. But I believe um. If you speak to the squad mates often, um, there's gonna be a, you know, there's gonna be a point later on where, um, you know, they whether they survive or they die. So I believe if you speak to the squad mates often, uh, again, it's, I'm not really sure if this is the way the game works. I really can't remember, but um, I remember speaking to everyone, and I believe everyone survived. So I think it's on the safer side for us just to speak to everyone, make sure um, we build the bond with the our, with our crews and. Uh, yeah, they're gonna survive the mission because that, that that's how it works. I, I I'm not really sure why um why speaking to people um 
affects whether they survive they live or die it's it's it's, it's very weird for me but <laughs> um you, you know what we're not here to nitpick we're just here to play the game all right so we're gonna head into liara's office and i believe we can have a word with liara as well Commander Shepard, it's a pleasure to see you again. You're the drone from the Shadow Brokers ship. Dr. Tassoni now refers to me as Glyph instead of Info Drone 95% of the time. If you have a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to a terminal in her office. It analyzes information packages. If you find any useful data, I can research upgrades for you. And what should I be looking for? I'll inform you if you found relevant data. When you do, return to this terminal for your choices. In the meantime, Dr. Tassoni would like to speak with you. Have a pleasant day. All right, so I guess we're going to speak to Liara. Well, huh? It was less than ideal. Yeah, that's a shocker. Whole worlds are being lost to the Reapers. What more will it take? Who knows? Hell, maybe the Council's just taking petty revenge for Shepard hanging up on them all those years ago. Wait, Shepard did what? Oh, sorry, I think we're going through some dark matter. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, that's the reference there again. Uh, again, check out Mass Effect 1 and uh, see what we did to the council if, you, if you're interested. Alright, so I believe uh, we have to speak to Liara. She has something to say to us, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like you brought more than just that drone from your ship. A few things were necessary. I'd be a very silent shadow broker without data feeds. So you have access to your resources? What I can get. We'll need it to research this Prothean device. Until we understand precisely what it does, it's far too dangerous to use. Did the Protheans actually complete this weapon? You mean, will it work? They wouldn't have poured their last resources into this device if they thought otherwise. But we really need to find out just what kind of weapon they left us. It'd be nice to know we're not kids playing around with a loaded gun. Absolutely. The damage it could cause if it backfired is unthinkable. People were finally starting to listen before the Reapers came. If we'd had a little more time, maybe Earth wouldn't. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. The thought means a lot, Liara. Thanks. You're welcome. And since I didn't mention it before, it's good to be back, Shepard. <clears throat> All right, it's good to be back as well. Apologies about that. Needed needed to clear my throat. All right, so it looks like um, I, I remember Glyph was saying something about this being an upgrade terminal or something. Ah, as you can see here, um, an armor mod kit which we can either uh, expand into ammo capacity or shield strength. Um, I'm gonna take a look at all of these, a uh, closer look at all of these off camera. Um, the results are available on the information network terminal. All right. Um, thanks, I guess. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm gonna be taking a look at all the upgrades. Uh, you know, on a, a, a closer look at all the upgrades later on. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that we get the right things uh, for this for this playthrough. So now we're gonna go and speak to Doctor Chakwas. Now, um, if you recall, I said we could either recruit Doctor Michelle or Doctor Chakwas. So if you recruit Doctor Michelle, uh, it's gonna have a slightly different dialogue, but. Um, aside from the dialogue that disparages this uh, disparities changes whatever you like to call it. Um, there's really no major consequences if you recruit the other doctor, but in my case, it's Chakwa, so yeah, we're gonna speak to her. Commander? Everything okay down here, Doctor? The Alliance team cleaned up and restocked, but it's still my old med bay. Feels like home. Welcome back. Thank you. Let's waste no time, if I may. I'd like to examine you. Nothing wrong with me, is there? No, but we should keep an eye on all those cybernetic implants Cerberus grafted into you. Expensive stuff bringing me back. And worth every penny. Let's just make sure everything is okay. Yes, a checkup never hurts. Just no scalpel this time, Doc. Alas, to my great disappointment, it is nothing invasive. I'm just going to run some diagnostics on your implants, and it'll take a few readings. Your system is still detecting the implants as foreign bodies. There's no health risk, but your scars are having trouble healing. I recommend reducing stress levels. Be compassionate. Given everything I've got, Doc. 
I'm just saying, a little more optimism and a little less realism could help, Commander. Anyway, it's just a cosmetic issue. Nothing to worry about. That's it. You're the picture of health. I'll see you around, Doctor. Take care, Shepard. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I just wish that uh, that that last segment really worked. Uh, that last sentence, a uh, little less uh, realism and more optimism. Really hope it works in real life. <laughs> All right. Um, we're not gonna loathe in self-deprecation. Uh, um, we're just gonna head down to the next deck, uh, which is engineering. Um, here we're gonna go ahead and speak to two people. The first of which being um, Diana Alice in Starboard Cargo. Um, so I believe she has something interesting to say as well. How's your new assignment working out, Alice? Fairly normal, except for the unshackled AI, Matriarch Benezia's daughter, and the communicator that can reach Earth. The first two, I can deal with. That last one gets my attention. So what are you asking for exactly? Anything from Earth is the lead story right now. That's not opinion, it's fact. Maybe I can pass on a few non-classified progress updates. Seriously? You just doubled my ratings. I don't need FaceTime, just a data upload. Tell people what's really happening on Earth. We need long recruiting lines on every planet after you air a story. I can do this, Commander. Remind me to tell you about the time I made an Elcor cry. <laughs> I love to hear that. Um, all right. So anyway, um, yeah, you might be wondering like why you know some of these. Uh, um, why am I going around to speak to everyone? Um, again, like I said, there's some major implications from that, and I believe um, if you speak to some of them, they are going to contribute to the war as well. So you're going to get some war assets uh, if you speak to them. Like uh, I know, I believe uh, Diana Alice there. Um, you speak to her, you complete her assignment. She's going to become a war asset if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to it's it's going to be very beneficial. All right. Anyway, um, the next person we're going to speak to is Engineer Adams over here. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. Or maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams, what are you doing here? I was put in charge of the Drive Corps retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR-1 made me an obvious choice. So, what do you think of our SR-2? She's incredible. If there's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, it's that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back, and I'm sorry for that. Why didn't you join us? I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. I didn't trust that it was really you, and I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. Also, as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? Your Alliance first. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Commander. Glad to be aboard. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, ma'am. Alright, so yeah, that was Engineer Adams. Um, he's actually a recurring character from Mass Effect 1. Um, and like Mass Effect 1, he holds a very, very minor role, if I'm being honest. Uh, not really too important. He always just sticks around down in engineering. So we're not going to uh, yeah, concern ourselves too much. But this next person, though, has uh, some, um, you know... You're gonna you, at, at least if you don't want to speak to everyone, at least speak to this guy. That's because uh, if I'm not mistaken, he I'm very certain that Mr. Cortez over here, he's the um, he's the only one that uh, that that well that has a sec that has that is scripted to die. I'm not really sure. I, I have to I really have to check out uh, on the other squad mates, but I am hundred percent sure about this guy. So yeah, if you want Mr. Cortez here to uh, survive, if you're playing Mass Effect, of course, if you're playing Legendary Edition, I believe it applies. Um, if you want Mr. Cortez to survive, you're gonna have to come down and speak to him very often. So I'm gonna kick things off by speaking to him now. Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. I've got news about our supply chains, Commander. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. What's going on? Sorry to just jump in, Commander. There's so much to be done, I get caught up in the tasks at hand. He's always like that. You need to chill out, Esteban. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So, you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dock ship. 
I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M-44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. To save the day, pendejo. I'm also responsible for logistics, making sure the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. Keep up the hard work, but don't kill yourself. Yes, Commander. Alright, so that was Lieutenant Cortez. So again, um, if you're playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition or you're of course playing the original trilogy, uh, the third game, uh, be sure to come down and check, him, check in with him often. Um, I'm very certain about this one. Um, he dies if you don't speak to him often for some reason. <laughs> um, okay, so the next person we're going to speak to is uh, James over here. He's working out. Uh, I guess he's a fitness, fitness geek or something, uh, judging by um, <laughs> his place down here, punching bag and some dumbbells. Okay, um, we're going to speak to him and see what he has to say. Hey, Shepard. <clears throat> How'd it go with the council? <clears throat> Same as usual. Non-committal. Unhelpful. Bet they still wanted you to help them out, no? <clears throat> yep. We're going to rescue a Turian Primarch from Palavan. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Never been to the Turian homeworld. <clears throat> you come down here for something? Or are you just looking? <sighs> my ship. I go where I want and talk to whoever I want. Fair enough. <clears throat> Not sure what there is to talk about. <clears throat> you already know my service record. <clears throat> I don't, actually. I didn't have access to personnel records when we met. Right. Forgot about that. <clears throat> well... <clears throat> Think you can dance and talk at the same time? Oh, I can dance. Okay, Lola. Let's do this. <laughs> Don't let my good looks fool you, Vega. I got my share of scars. <laughs> you remind me of my old CO. Oh, yeah? And who was that? Captain Tony. He was a hard-ass son of a bitch, but a good leader. <sighs> nice. What do you mean, was? Died. With most of my squad. Protecting a civilian colony from a collector attack. And the colony? It was either them, or the intel we had on the collectors. Intel we could have used to destroy them. I chose the intel. Sorry. That's a tough call. The best part was, we didn't really need the intel in the end. Because you were out saving the galaxy by taking down the entire Collector homeworld. You didn't know. You can't blame yourself, Vega. Who says I'm blaming myself? I do. You a shrink too? No, but that stunt back on Mars was reckless. You're lucky to be alive. So? So, maybe you don't care if you live or die. Or maybe. I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war. Maybe you are. But if you're half as good as I think you are, we need you alive. Thanks for the pep talk. Anytime. Hey. Thanks for the dance, Lola. Lola, huh? You kind of look like a Lola. <laughs> you're cute. So I'll let you get away with it. For now. That's it. Now you made me blush. 
<laughs> um, that was a bit weird. Uh, that was certainly not how I wanted the conversation to come off as, but um, I guess it is what it is. All right. So um, for the most part, I think we're going to end the video here for now because we are running out of time. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode of uh, this dialogue episode of Mass Effect 3, um, I think, you know what, I'll probably do um, a dialogue episode each time we complete the mission because I remember there's a couple of, uh, uh, well, like something like segments like this after each mission, you get to speak to the squad mates and stuff like that. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'll just uh, plan ahead from there. But um, for the most part, we're going to end the video right now because we are running out of time. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Mass Effect 3, as usual, feel free to leave a like on this video as well as hit that big red subscribe button down below because I'll be super grateful of your support. And most importantly, you won't miss a single one of these episodes that I'm currently pushing out on the channel right now. So yeah, with that being said, this is Kefalo signing off and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.